I want to start today's video with a little bit of an apology because I haven't published much recently on YouTube and I've got quite a lot of requests coming in, a lot of people saying, well, can you do this, can you do that, can you do the other? Um, I haven't done very much because I've been very busy uh, with work and my work involves a lot of typing and I've had a recurrence of tendonitis which I sometimes get in my hand. So playing the piano is actually quite painful, I'm trying not to do it very much. So I'm going to make this video today and then maybe just take another week or two off. Um, I might do another one in, August, in, in sort of first half of August, but we'll see. Um, and then kind of start in earnest towards the end of August and, and, and September again. So apologies for that. The very first one when I get back will be a video on pentatonic runs, which one or two people have been asking for me and I've been promising and promising for ages. OK, so because my hands hurt a bit and I, I don't want to play the piano too much today, I thought what I'd do to kind of give you something to think about for summer, if you like, is have a little bit of a look at five, what I think are, are really brilliant performances involving the piano. Um, what I'm going to do is embed a link to each one in the video as I talk about it, so you can click off and go and visit uh, the particular video. I'll set it up, uh, YouTube lets me do this, I'll set it up so that each video um, opens in a new window when you click the link. Okay. So there are going to be five of them, and all very, very different. Okay, here we go. The first one, number one, is, um, should see the link kind of magically appearing here, almost between my hands, um, is um, Lady Gaga um, playing her song Poker Face in the Radio 1 Live Lounge. Uh, that, that, that's BBC Radio 1. Uh, and this was, I think, either last summer or the summer before. And it's just her and a piano. Go and have a look at it now because it's really interesting. If you know the um, the chart version of Poker Face, it, it's really heavily produced. It's very uh, it, it's very kind of disco-y. It's got a very strong beat behind it. What she does with just herself and a piano there is completely turn the song around, so you can kind of see where it's come from. It's got this lovely rich chord sequence. And which she uses in different ways. I mean, it's more complicated than that, but those are the, the core chords. B flat, D minor over A, B flat 7 over A, and E flat. Quite a few times in the video, you can see what she's doing. And there's quite a lot of interesting stuff going on there. In particular, she's really showing off her kind of musical roots in vaudeville. Yeah, um, sort of music hall and later on there's quite a lot of a Broadway influence in there as well. You, you might think that's kind of a crazy thing to say, but, but it genuinely it really is there. A little while ago I was talking about how um, Elton John has his, a lot of his influence comes from church music. Um, yeah, with Lady Gaga, so much of what she does and plays is from Broadway show tunes and from inspired by Broadway stuff and it's kind of from the vaudeville tradition you get that really kind of camp I can almost kind of hear a hint of traditional Jewish music in there as well I might be going a little bit too far but look at some of the stuff she does first of all there are the very very big chords she really spreads in a couple of places, she arpeggiates them like that. Yeah. But she also, and this is something I, I talk about again and again, she's really good at using the piano as a percussion instrument, yeah, in her kind of bridge section. Yeah, there's not much pedal going on there, and she's using the piano not just to comp, not just to not just to accompany herself, but also as a kind of character in the song in its own right. She's using it really percussively. Yeah, you get the idea. It's really sort of camp and over the top. One thing you will notice is that in her left hand, if, if you glimpse this much, pretty much everything she's doing, although she's a very, very sophisticated pianist, a very good musician, She's playing a lot of very simple double, what are sometimes called empty octaves in the left hand, okay, yeah, very sort of straightforward. The action tends to be happening in the right hand. The reason for that is because she's doing something really, really difficult, which is playing and singing at the same time, and she's astonishingly good at it, but she's making it a little bit easier for herself by keeping that left hand really simple, not trying to muck about too much with it at all, and adding the character in the right, okay. 
really worth looking at a lot of Lady, Lady Gaga stuff. If you, if you Google or, or search on YouTube Lady Gaga piano, there are one or two performances out there of her doing stuff where it's just her and the piano. And she's really, really outstanding. Really great musician. Um, more, you know, more so than you would think from a lot of the sort of media coverage of her, which is, you know, you know, the, uh, newspapers kind of focus on her kind of jumping around in her knickers and stuff. But she's a superb pianist, a superb songwriter, and really worth looking at her technique. Yeah, I might come back to her in future videos because sort of vaudeville on Broadway and that kind of tradition isn't really something I've touched on, and it has such a huge, huge influence on on modern pop music. Okay, next one, Magic Link coming up here, hopefully is a video of the great Nina Simone, who was one of the um, the great female jazz pianists, probably the great female jazz pianist, actually. Re really, really sublimely brilliant. Um, in a lot of ways, she's actually better known as um, a soul singer, a pop singer uh, of sorts. And she had this big hit with My Baby Just Cares For Me in 1958, which became a bigger hit almost in the 80s. And she was associated with the Black Power movement and stuff in, in, in the late 60s. But a really brilliant pianist, classically trained, and you can really see it in this video, which is her performing an extended version of My Baby Just Cares For Me at the Montreux Jazz Festival. I guess in the 1980s sometimes. Sometime it, it, it's not really dated. What's clever about what she does is the way she starts with a very, very simple riff, yeah, and builds it up into this, you know, huge musical architecture. So she just starts out with... Very, very... What could be more simple than that? And yet it gets built out into this huge sort of... Um, it's almost like a Bach fugue, yeah? It's really complex, it's really intense. And at the same time, she sings this beautiful, simple song over the top of it. Again, a really difficult thing to do. Like Lady Gaga, she's playing this incredibly complex stuff, all these crazy chords, and singing over the top at the same time. And that requires so much mental effort. It, you know, it's incredible. But, but watch it. It's quite a long video, but it's worth sticking with. And look at how she goes from this very simple... ...to this, you know, kind of incredible piece of... Um, spontaneous improvisation. An interesting thing to say there, I think what she is doing is heavily improvised. Clearly she has planned it to an extent and she's practiced it to an extent, but it kind of has that spontaneity about it which is the mark of improvisation, Yeah, which I think you, you can usually tell. You know, some of it's been planned, some of it's been practiced, but a lot of it she's just, you know, going with the flow and, and playing what feels right when. Okay? Lovely, absolutely lovely song. Okay, video number three. We're making a big, big leap in style now. Here's the link to video number three, and it is the pianist Alfred Brendel um, performing the second movement of Schubert's final B flat sonata, D960. It's the last sonata Schubert ever wrote in. It was 1828. He wrote it just before he died, um, along with two other sonatas. You know, it, it, it's a kind of group of them at the end there, which are outstandingly brilliant. The reason I want you to look at this is to appreciate both, certainly the intensity of Brendel's performance, but also listen to what Schubert does with harmony. Yeah, If we're playing pop piano and jazz piano and rock piano or whatever, we tend to think that classical music is a completely different world, when in fact it's not. Virtually everything we're doing was first developed by classical musicians, classical pianists, 100, 200 years ago. Yeah. In particular, listen to the final, final few seconds where the chords that Schubert uses sound incredibly modern. Yeah, it's in C sharp, and it, right at the end it goes like this. which would fit in more or less any pop song in terms of the chord sequence. Yeah, very, very, very kind of modern progressive sound. In fact, by Schubert's standards, that's actually quite a conservative chord construction, yeah, because he's often a very, um, you know, a very way out composer. You can hear a lot of stuff in Schubert that really prefigures jazz, yeah. If all you listen to is kind of, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it's kind of rock, pop, jazz, whatever, 
listen to some classical music and Schubert is a great place to start because there's so much to learn from his um, uh, from his sonatas especially because um, they're just absolutely fantastic. If you're a reasonably competent classical pianist and you in which case you probably know this already, but they're also not that difficult. Yeah, some of them are tricky, but some of them are fairly simple. So if you've done kind of grade six or something, you'll be able to manage very large chunks of Schubert. There's a broader lesson there as well. Yes, you can learn an enormous amount from listening to classical music, even if you're only interested in pop, jazz, whatever. Remember, it takes a little bit of time, it takes a little bit of getting into it. It's not, most classical music isn't accessible in the same way that um, most modern music is, most modern popular music is, you need to work on it. You need to listen to, you know, find a Schubert sonata and the B-flat one, D960, is a great one to start with. Listen to it a few times, get a sense of it. Don't try and expect it to d d deliver everything straight away, if you like, yeah? See what, you know, see how it grows on you. Listen to the, you know, the different techniques and the different sounds that it makes. Very definitely worth doing. Um, the very best... I think recordings of the Schubert Sonatas, if you're interested at the moment, are by Mitsuko Ishida, um, M-I-T-S-U-K-O, and I can't remember how you spell her surname, I think it's U-S-C-H-I-D-A, Mitsuko Ishida. Uh, you'll find it on iTunes, you'll probably find quite a lot of it on YouTube as well, but absolutely the best ones available. And if you're listening through headphones, they're not too hissy, as a lot of old, uh, old classical recordings are, okay, because they're fairly recent. Anyway, enough about Schubert, enough about Brendel, let's move on to the next one. I'll put the link just here somewhere. And this is another classical piano performance, but of a very different type and in, uh, of, from much later. It's Olga Kuhn, brilliant Russian pianist, performing about the last 10 minutes of the third movement, so, yeah, the third movement, which is the last movement, of the third piano concerto by Rachmaninoff. Okay? And it's incredible. You're not going to learn an enormous amount in terms of technique and fingering and harmony looking at this because it's so incredibly complex. I mean, I could never dream of this. You know, I'd have to practice 10 years before I could even get close to this. Um, it needs a sublimely brilliant pianist to play this stuff. But it's a brilliant illustration of what the piano can do if you let it. Yeah, it's piano and orchestra playing together. And the piano is really standing up for itself, it, you know, it's a whole orchestra in a box, if you like. Um, again, Rachmaninoff, really worth listening to. The piano concertos especially are really accessible, really good fun to listen to. Um, again, you need to make a bit of an effort, but you know they're they're very um, you know they're very easy to get into really by the standards of classical music. Because he was kind of writing in the early years of the 20th century, he also and he was in America a lot of the time. Rachmaninoff absorbed an awful lot of jazz. Um, sounds into his his music, and you can hear them every now and then. Even, even you know the last um, the last ten minutes that, that we've got there, played by Olga Kern. A few bits sound a little bit like George Gershwin, if you know any Gershwin, and um, Rachmaninoff certainly knew Gershwin personally. Um, definitely worth listening to. Again, just for a sense of what the piano can do. Okay, there we go. And fifth and finally, uh, we have a link here. Um, Jules Holland playing the piano. Now, if you're in the States, you might not have come across Jules Holland. He's a TV personality in the United Kingdom. He's off on the BBC a lot. And he plays very, very good blues and boogie-woogie piano, yeah? A lot of people find him quite irritating because he's quite, got quite a nasal voice. But whether you love him or hate him, personality-wise, he's a really good piano player. Every year, he runs um, something called his annual Hootenanny, uh, which is... Uh, the run-up to um, the change of the New Year. So on New Year's Eve from kind of nine in the evening until midnight, he runs this thing called his Hootenanny, which has some brilliant, brilliant music on it every year. You know, contemporary bands, a lot of blues people, a lot of jazz singers and so on. And this particular video is Jules Holland uh, with his orchestra um, accompanying Teach Me Tonight, which is an old Sammy Kahn song. Yeah, Listen to what he's doing. Yeah, it's very, very delicate. It's very subtle it matches the singer and it matches the orchestra absolutely perfectly you know a lot to be learned there the singer is amy winehouse who uh you know if you live in the uk you can't miss the fact has just tragically died young uh in fact just a week ago yesterday um this performance was um i think it, it was the 12th Hootenanny, that's right and it was on the 31st of december 2004 when she was 
just beginning to really get known, but before everything kind of went wrong for her and sort of drinking drugs and, and bad boyfriends and things. Um, and, she, and she's absolutely sublime. It's just brilliant, brilliant performance. It, 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 it blows you away. You need to listen to it about eight times. I, I just couldn't stop listening to it uh, last week. Um, and, but again, listen to how Jules, the accompanist, plays along with Amy, the singer, and, and his background, and how the two play off each other. Yeah, the singer is definitely the main event, but the piano and the orchestra, and particularly the piano, are just in there providing exactly the right amount of support. It's absolutely perfect. Brilliant orchestration, brilliant piano playing, and especially, you know, sublime singing. Really good. So, there we go. Um, so, not much playing in today's video. Hurty hands. Sorry about that, like I said. Um, we will get things back to normal in the next two or three weeks. I'm just going to have you know, a week or two of not really playing very much and try not to type very much either. In the meantime, if you've got any questions, fire them through. I'm always happy to get back to you if I can. Bear in mind, I'm trying not to type much recently, so if there's a bit of a delay uh, on getting back to you, uh, apologies for that. I'm going to sit down one day and have just have a big catch-up of all my YouTube correspondence. Um, you may also, if you haven't seen it already, be interested in my book, How to Really Play the Piano. Um, I'll include a link in the video and in the YouTube description as well, so you can find out all about that. I won't bang on about it now. Okay, so I really hope you enjoy those videos. Um, let me know what you think, add comments, anything interesting you've got to say. And I will see you probably in a couple of weeks' time. Okay, see you soon.